So in this video, what we're going to do is upgrade the firmware on this BTEC DMR6X2 digital handheld ham radio. It currently has firmware version 1.0.1 installed on this radio. We're going to upgrade to 1.0.2. Now when I go into my settings and I go to device info, the radio is going to show that I have firmware version 1.2.0 installed. This is because there was a bug or a defect or a mislabeling in the original firmware upgrade that I had done. It's important to note this is my second firmware upgrade inside of two months. So that's a little bit of a hassle. You want to make sure you use the USB cable that came with your radio. It's important because this radio has no chips or circuitry internal to the cable. So you definitely want to make sure you use a pass-through cable, ideally the one that came with your radio. You want to take the two-pronged edge and make sure that it is firmly seated into the mic port on the side of your BTEC radio. Oh, you also want to make sure this thing's turned off when you plug that in. So let's go ahead and take the cable, make sure it's in there, and then make sure that it's seated all the way in. Once that's done, we're going to take the USB end of this cable, and we're going to go ahead and connect that to our laptop. It's pretty easy to do, not too difficult. In order to upgrade your firmware, you're going to need to download the firmware, and you're also going to need to download the newest version of the CPS, or Computer Programming Software. You can get this from btech.com's site. I'll include a link below. When you go there, you want to click on Support, pick DMR, DMR Software, and then you can see the various versions that are available. You want 1.20 from 9.7. Go ahead and click this link, and then a zip file will download to your computer. Once that zip file has been downloaded, we want to open it up and inspect the contents. When you take a look in there, you have two folders. One, Mac OS X, which doesn't really have anything in there, and then one labeled DMR6X2102, and that's the one we want to take a look at. There's a copy of the programming guide at the bottom of the list. You have some alternate USB drivers, you have the firmware update, and an icon update. What's important here is, is that after you do the firmware update, you will need to update the icon set on your, on your radio. Let's take a quick look at the release notes. So when I take a look at the release notes, one of the things it says important, after the firmware update, you need to do a reset of the radio. So this is really important. This is a factory reset that you're going to need to do. And when you do this, make sure you have a backup of your code plug or you're going to be sorry. And this goes through all the different things that are updated. I'm not going to go ahead and run through this because it's a pretty healthy list. And uh, you're probably interested in that anyway, so you can go ahead and read that. Um, I don't think you would do the upgrade unless there was something in these that uh, you were interested in. Anyhow, it is a pretty exhaustive list. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at the instructions for updating the firmware. It's important to read the instructions. The update is a pretty simple thing to do, but you want to make sure you read these. Uh, pay attention to step number three. In order to get into a mode where your radio can receive the update, you need to be pushing the push to talk and the orange button on the top of your radio when you boot it up. Otherwise, it will not take the, uh, the firmware update. I'm also going to open up the instructions for the icon update, because without that, the, the firmware update is not complete. And if you take a look here, number one talks about holding the PTT key and the PF2 key in order to go into a mode where your radio can be updated from an icon standpoint. It's really important to read these instructions. I can't stress that enough. It's the easiest way to avoid mistakes and trouble. From the zip file archive, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the setup program and actually install the application. When that happens, I get a pop-up from Windows Defender. Let's see if I can bring that to the forefront. And basically what it's saying, it's an unrecognized app. This doesn't mean that there's a virus or that there's malware. What it does mean is that this is not digitally signed. And that happens with smaller companies when they, when they produce this type of software on a regular basis. The certification process can become quite expensive. Anyhow, I'm going to install to the C drive. I'm just going to run through the installer program like I would any other application. And then I am going to choose to create a desktop icon to make my life a little bit easier. I hit next, verify the install tasks, and then I hit install. Now that went a little bit fast for me because I sped up the video. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch the CPS software. You get this pop-up here. I leave it unchecked and click OK. So here we are in the CPS or computer programming software. My radio is connected per the instructions. That means I did the special button sequence when I booted it up. From the menu bar, 
I pick tool and then firmware and then I browse to the folder in the zip archive that contains the firmware file. When I click that I get file open success. So the next thing I want to do from the firmware update tool is I want to just check my settings and make sure they look right like my COM port for example. Click right and then it will write to the radio. Now I've sped this up a little bit for the sake of internet magic so yours is not going to go this fast. But what's happening right now is the firmware is being written to the radio. Once this happens the radio will reboot itself. Write complete, I click OK. And then I click exit. So now the CPS has installed the firmware. I want to go back and just check the instructions to make sure I did everything correctly. And it looks like I did. So we feel good and we're going to move forward. Now it's time for the factory reset. Taking a look at the instructions, it tells us we need to push the PTT button and the PF1 button below the PTT button when we power it on. You're going to get a message asking if you're sure you want to initialize the radio. Make sure that your code plug is backed up before you do this. Once you do it, it's going to come up and ask you to calibrate and set the date, and then it will boot into itself in normal mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions for updating the icons. Make sure you boot your radio by pushing the PTT key and the PF2 key at the same time. It will display in update mode. Keep in mind your radio should be connected to your computer. Go ahead and click tool from the menu and then go down to firmware update. When you open this up you want to make sure you browse to the file for the icon update not the firmware update and that's going to be in a different folder in your zip file archive. So once we find that file we go ahead and we click it, we click open, and then we get the open success message. Click OK. Make sure we're on the right COM port. And then we're going to go ahead and click the right button. And it's going to go ahead and write the icon set to the radio. Now I've sped this up for the sake of the length of the video. Once this is done, you're going to want to go back and write your code plug that you backed up before we did the firmware update. That way you'll have all your configurations, your talk groups, your channels, um, and, and any digital contacts that you had before will be back on your radio. Once the write is done, we're going to go ahead and exit out, and then we're going to disconnect our radio from the computer, and then we are going to check to make sure that the firmware was updated. So we go into menu, we go into settings, we go into device info, and we can see our firmware has been upgraded to version 1.2. I want to thank everybody for staying here and watching this video. I appreciate it. If you have any feedback or questions, go ahead and post them below. You can also click the uh, like button or subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.